Okay, someone offers you $10,000 if you can go flawless this weekend on your first attempt in Trials of Osiris, but there's a catch. You have to play Warlock. What subclass are you going to pick to guarantee the W? Top Tree Dawnblade? Arc Warlock with a Stag Rift? Maybe some crazy OP stasis build? Well today I have a very special video for you. I want to introduce you to my friend Maki. I believe he has one of the brightest minds in the Destiny community when it comes to meta analysis and build making. He's also been a huge contributor in helping with script writing and testing for many of my videos for the past year or so. He's going to explain why if you want that $10,000 you should really master the Void Warlock build that he's going to show off in this video. I'm here with my friend Maki today who is a Voidwalker main and he's going to explain why Voidwalker is perhaps the most competitive Warlock build in Destiny right now for PvP and explain why you should be using the build that he's going to show you today. Yes, I hope you're as excited as I am for the Blink play style and I really hope your viewers will watch all I have to say about this because I do believe it's one of the most underrated and skillful avenues of play in the game right now. I think it's Something really not talked about that much. So in this video, Maki's going to explain why he thinks this is stronger than the potential of Top Tree Dawnblade, um, Bottom Tree Stormcaller, pretty much any of the most meta Warlock builds that you see in the Crucible right now. So it'll be interesting to see this build come into life. Yeah, I will try to uh, comment on the matchups of the various white, of the various Warlock subclasses. Sorry. Uh, main protagonist being Top Dawn, everyone's favorite. The bottom tree, uh, Stormcaller with the Arc Buddy, Stag Rift is also very popular. A Shadebinder for the elite few who know how to pilot it very well. And I'll try to mention the matchups as we go along in the video. So let's start out talking about Blink. You are a huge Blink fan. I played Blink a lot back in Destiny 1. It's not something I've spent a whole lot of time with in Destiny 2, but I know you and our uh, mutual friend Yerda are big fans of using Blink, and I've been testing it for the past week or so while we've been kind of working on this video. And uh, just tell us why Blink you think is the best movement ability for Warlocks. Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, sit back and relax, grab yourself some popcorn because I have a lot to say about Blink. And it's interesting, I talked to some friends the other day, many agree that it is actually hidden as the best movement kit Warlock as the entire class has to offer, even better than Top Tree Dawnblade. So like there's a lot to learn about Blink because it's not as intuitive as Burst Glide, which to beginners also isn't intuitive. And it also isn't as easy or as free as Top Tree Dawnblade. Right, so uh, before I get into Blink, let me quickly mention for uh, uh, the people who are not uh, not in the loop. This is what Top Dawn does. If you're looking at me, I can dash instantly. I can pop the grenade and float, then I get two dashes, and there's like no delay on the dash. So it's, it's a very popular class because it's easy movement, and you can also skate very quickly. Even with Heat Rider, there are some interesting tricks. But of course, the people did not click on this video to see me talk about Top Down, so this is about Blink. This is what makes me so excited about the build, because in the history of the Voidwalker, the one thing which never changed is Blink. They changed all the abilities, but still Blink remains the same. It's the lifeblood of this class, and I really hope your viewers will find the time to learn this movement, which I do believe can counter most of the other movement skill gappy things slash exotics. Looking at you, Stompy players, uh, in the game. So, as you said, let me start off with some elementary mechanical things, and then we'll get into the exciting tips and tricks. What do you need to know? Blink replaces your second jump, replacing Burst Glide, Strafe Glide, or for the few among you that run Balanced Glide, I guess that exists too. Meaning when you press spacebar or whatever your jump input is, it replaces the functionality of space and makes you jump do the same. So whenever you press jump the second time, Blink will teleport you a certain distance. The distance does not depend on the mobility stat, for those wondering. It is always in the direction you are currently moving, with a few exceptions. So if you're moving mostly up and down, Blink will almost always teleport you either up or down. But if you're moving even a little bit to the side, it will just continue your movement in the direction it currently is. Note, this means teammates can legit launch you off the map, so be careful about teammates bumping you. If they bump you and you blink, you're off the map. Which is an annoying feature, but sacrifices have to be made. Blink is an instant teleport. So that's that. And an important thing to visualize, or at least to understand, is the fact that you cannot blink infinitely often. There are two blinks, 
and then a cooldown of three seconds, and then a third blink, and then a cooldown of five seconds. That is if you are running the movement exotic Astro Sight Burst, the helmet. If you're running a traditional blink, you will have two charges and then a five second recharge window. And would you say it's pretty much always worth it to run Astro Sight if you're going to be playing a blink style? It seems like it's such a huge buff to the movement kit. Yeah, and to be more specific, the Astro Sight blinks the distance, the cooldown. Remember, you have a third charge on three seconds, which can bail you out. And it also uh, makes the weapons ready faster. We'll get into that in a sec. And a uh, very important feature, it keeps your radar up. The classic blink will stop you from seeing radar while you're blinking and for a while afterwards. Yeah, those are some pretty huge buffs. That was one of the big things they've made as a change. Um, a lot of Destiny 1 players will remember the blink shotgun playstyle. That's something that kind of died in Destiny 2 for a couple of reasons, but one of the big things is that readying time of your weapons after you finish your blink, which in Destiny 1 you could essentially blink right into someone and then shotgun them immediately. And in Destiny 2 they introduced quite a big delay between when you can actually fire your weapon after blinking. And Astro Sight doesn't make that perfect, but it does help it quite a bit, so um, you still wouldn't necessarily want to blink right into someone, as I'm sure we'll talk about. Um, in the more tips section, but it is something that if you want to play that more aggressive style, it helps you out to you know, do that without losing so many of the uh, downsides of blinking. Yeah, and the upsides are very clear, right? You are teleporting, quite literally. You cannot teleport through walls, but you are teleporting in a straight line. This makes you faster than everyone else because you're literally getting distance for free, including top down players on the short run. At the extreme long distances, top down will outrun you. Also, uh, scroll wheel skating with burst glide on stairs, but that's unfortunately exclusive to mouse and keyboard. And there are some other tricks, again, maybe like the glaive dash with Bakris, which are faster. But generally speaking, like for burst rotations, blink is faster. And I guess it's a good point to demo this. So imagine, I want your viewers at home to imagine, like here's a team fight, we're fighting each other here, and there's a stalemate, and I would like to flank. Well, if I'm a hunter, I go invis, but if I'm a warlock, the best warlock class by far to flank is blink because of its sheer speed. So see how fast I can just close the gap and come here to middle to re-engage from the side. For a team engagement, those two to three seconds are actually very fast. And mind you, they will only ever see one or two radar pings off you because you are again teleporting. Invis is slower and while it's hard to see, it is not nearly as versatile as the blink. And of course, remember, I can do that same rotation backwards if I'm caught alone. So there are a lot of strategic aspects using the sheer speed of blink. So what are some of your best movement tips for players who want to start investing some time into mastering the blink movement? Yeah, so after they learn the mechanics, which I just explained, there are like many tips and tricks you can add to your gameplay to really bring out the most of blink. I would... Uh, suggest you add them one by one uh, after understanding the mechanics themselves. And of course, there's a little bit of style to this too. Different players blink differently. I think we mentioned Gerda, who did a full three months on blink. He would definitely be blinking in a different style than myself or like Cami, who is also a blink advocate. But there are some universally, well, not really universally, but in the blink community agreed upon techniques, which I would like to show you. So the first thing is, of course, against Patty's favorite weapon, the sniper rifle. Yeah, so imagine this is like the start of a match, and I would like to get into Shayura's range, but I don't have range here, so I need to get close to Patty. But if I slide here, he probably headshots me. Even if I slow peek, he probably headshots me. He's a good sniper. You saw, you people watch his stream, right? He blasts everyone faces off. Anyway, so how do I come to Patty safely? Well, I can abuse the power of blink here, and I can blink first here, then I can close the gap here, and then I can uh, slide here. Again, I'm safe and blink very close to him. And during all of that rotation, I was completely safe. I was not at risk of getting sniped here. I was not at risk of getting sniped from any other lane here in middle because I could also cross it with blink. And here I'm in his face ready to SMG him down where it's much harder for him to hit the easy headshot. This is the fundamental thing you have to understand with the teleportation movement gag. It can let you get to places where your opponents don't want you to be. 
So one of the other really cool things about that technique is that you can also choose which side you want to peek from. So for newer players who might not understand, the way the camera works in Destiny uh, gives you advantage to which side of the wall or cover you peek from. Uh, generally speaking, you always want to be peeking from your left side, and that's because it makes it a little bit easier to see the full target while they can only see a sliver of you. Um, and so anytime you have that opportunity, you want to peek uh, towards the left. But the problem is that a lot of times you don't have that opportunity without crossing a gap. So Blink is one of the cool movement abilities that lets you reposition pretty safely and take that peek the direction that you actually want to take it so you have the advantage. Right, so I could do something like this and then slide at you or do whatever I want from the left, even if I'm caught in the right. I don't need to risk this. And uh, for, for context, I think it's important for your viewers to understand like the strength of this. The only alternatives you would have to accomplish is to come to guarantee yourself the left peak to cross this lane without getting sniped are Bakris, which is essentially Blink 2, and, and Teos Wards, which is a literal immunity shield. Sure, Glaciers, but that's really going to the extreme. Yeah, and on the, while we're on the topic of picking advantageous positions, sometimes your opponent will throw a grenade to stop you from moving somewhere. So, Pat. Right, so that's a vortex. Don't go into it. But with blink, I can go through it without taking damage. So you literally do not exist while you're blinking. This can, of course, lead to many advantageous play styles. Not play styles, positioning. Because people cannot stop you from getting heavy. They cannot stop you from getting a zone from a res or from any lane that you really want. Again, for context, your only choice to avoid this is now really Bakris because Antaeus wouldn't get damaged. It doesn't have the immune shield from the front. And on top of that, it's also really good at evading one of my most hated things in Destiny, which is getting solo supered. So uh, when I play PvP, a lot of people like to throw their Nova bombs at me or go with a Thunder Crash. And uh, Blink is really cool for that because you can basically use that movement to um, evade that super that's coming your way. So do you want to do a little demonstration of some of the ways you like to evade? So just before we do that, let me mention, so I can evade grenades, right? I can evade most of the projectiles. I can also evade rockets. I can ev evade solo blade barrages, which is very painful for hunters. You can ev evade squalls, again, very painful. Thunder crashes, you can make them feel bad. And Nova Bombs, even the tracking Nova Bomb can be evaded. So before we demo it, let me go over the like thought process of how to do it so your viewers can understand where it comes from. If you blink back in the hopes that the Nova Bomb lands short, the Slova Bomb, or it's not really slow anymore, but the tracking bomb, will chase you down. So that's not a good idea. Also Thunder Crash will chase you down, also Blade Barrage will likely chase you down. So we need to give some thought where we blink. To the side is good, but that's really slow. And again, to the side risks people tracking you. So I would advise anyone who is getting solo supered, mostly you, well, me, myself too, a little bit, but anyone who is getting solo supered with blink, try to blink forwards and to the side, like to a 45 degree angle of the guy shooting you. Because this is the steepest turn that the Slova bomb would need to make. It's also the strongest turn your Thunder Crash opponent needs to make. Again, you can't blink at them, but pass to them. So now we can demo it. Would you Nova bomb me? Yep. And there you go. By Nova. Of course, it's advantageous. As I explained in the mechanic section, you're always blinking in the direction you're moving. It's better if you can debate it and then like prep it with some short hops, and then you can really uh, well, not that way, but uh, if I show like this, you can really cover some substantial distance with one blink. But it's enough to, in a heartbeat, oh no, I'm getting solo super blink forward and up to the side. And it will dodge almost everything reliably. And what about playing against uh, more like roaming supers, like melee based supers? How would you recommend getting around some of those? There is a lot of ideas here too. And it does take some thought process because remember, the main problem is you have only two charges, potentially three with Astrocyte. So you can't really use them all up and then be stuck. So the idea is you need to wait out as much of the roaming super as possible and then start dodging rapidly. So usually how I would do it is if I didn't get solo super in my face with the roaming super, I would try to keep my distance with manually walking, like no trick walking. And once I have the impression they're close, then I will start blinking to use that 
burst fast movement. Because remember, there is nothing in the game which can be as fast as Blink, minus very extreme cases. But again, if you use up those two charges too early, you will be stuck and this solo super can catch up to you. So there are a lot of thought process which goes into this. But have in mind that you want to have them get kind of close, of course not too close, and then you want to start blinking. Remember, blink always into cover, not into the open, because in the open you're very vulnerable. As I explained before, you're the weakest at the point of departure and at the point of landing. So one more tip I would like to share for all the hand cannon mains out there. You can, of course, use hand cannons with this, but you can use almost anything you like with Blink. There's a very cool technique you can learn, which is you, I can jump, I can shoot, and then I can Blink out of the jump. So let me demo that once again. You can be very fast with it too. And that uh, sudden movement will prevent people from team shooting you and will make you in, it will put you in safety for the longest possible duration. Again, hunters can do something similar, but the, the mechanics are different. Here I end up somewhere where I didn't start, but hunter strafe jump ends up on the same side. They start also hunter dodge is on the same side. The curve dash is very flexible. But if I do this with blink, it's further, it's more instant, but it's only away. You cannot blink back. I mean, you could like slide and then jump back, but that's slow. So again, you need to learn jump, shoot, blink. And here I would like to go off on a very short tangent on why the mobility stat is what the mobility stat is. So blink is not affected by mobility whatsoever. The distance is the same always. What is affected is the short hop. And the question is how much mobility should you run? Good question. The appeal of high mobility is that when you do this trick, when you do this technique of jump, shoot, blink, you can hover longer with higher mobility. In my opinion, and now this is a very strong opinion piece, it is not worth wasting so much stats to just get a slightly longer hover duration. It's good enough the way it is default. I think the stats are better invested elsewhere. But I know my friend Cami will argue that 100 mobility is mandatory. Of course, as I said, there is style, and with the style, you can figure out what works for you best. I'm just here to show you what mobility really does and doesn't do. And it also has some other benefits, like your strafe speed in duels and things like that. So there are, I think, some reasons to run it. But it, like you said, it's a lot of personal preference, and I think a lot of it, too, is just what you get used to, because if you're used to a particular strafing speed and then you're either faster or slower, that can maybe throw your shots off a little bit. So I think it's something that you can kind of play around with and figure out what makes the most sense. And also, as we'll talk about in a few moments, just the rest of this build is really powerful. So there are things like grenades that you might want to invest more into as opposed to just more mobility. Yeah, and speaking of grenades, this trick I just showed you also works with a grenade. So there's a slight caveat. If you blink too soon, and I'll demo the mistake here, if you blink too soon after pressing the ability, it will actually cancel the ability. Don't blink immediately after using the ability, it will cancel it. You need to wait it for, for uh, the ability to actually depart and then you can safely blink. That's just something that happens to me way too much for me not to mention it. Uh, we've covered a lot of mileage with blink. Let me just summarize what we've learned. Don't blink at people, blink past people or away from people. You are weakest at departure and landing. You are completely safe on the travel in between. You are faster than everyone else, and you choose lanes better and more forcibly than everyone else. All right, so that was an awesome overview of Blink, and I think people will really enjoy that if they put some time into learning it. But what's really cool about this build that you showed me is that Blink's just one component of this uh, very competitive build. And so let's get into some of the actual mechanics of how to put it all together. Yeah, I really like that you mentioned it that way. So let's together like go on this journey with me. I'll try to make it quick to not bore your viewers, but let me actually illustrate to you how I came up with the build. So if you would open your collections up and look at all the exotic uh, starting points, so we know two things. We have Blink and we have one exotic armor piece. The question is which one? So if you scroll through all of them, there are only very few which actually do anything noteworthy on Blink. For example, Karnstein Armlets, where they are awesome for top down, they are almost wasted on Voidwalker because you can get the same effect from the subclass intrinsically. There's something like Fellwinter's Helm, which again works with melee abilities, but the 60 damage of 
the void walker melee really isn't that good. And then, of course, there's a lot of them which straight up don't work. Nothing manacles are cool. The scatter grenade is bad, though. So the only exotics I would ever try to run with this would be the Skull of Dire Ahamkara is a pure swappable, if you really want to be that grimy. There's Eye of Another World, which does obvious things, but I think there are better choices for White Walker. Netherrack Sin is awesome, because you can slightly mitigate all the super cooldown nerfs and get your super back way faster than everyone else. There's the Stag. Of course, Stag is awesome at all times. And we will talk about the Rift on the White Walker in a sec here, but getting a lot of Rifts is also a really juicy feature of the stack. Variety of Brow has one trick and one trick only. Uh, the main idea of Variety of Brow would be to use magnetic grenades, pair it with the oppressive darkness, echo of undermining, and then get a void weapon kill, say for, with the Shayera or the Palindrome. And after all that, you will have 10 seconds of one shot grenade potential. Of course, you also get more grenade cooldowns on void weapon kills. There is a, uh, an alternate exotic choice. There are Astrocyte Verse, the helmet, which I used in the Blink demo. And in my opinion, this is the undoubtedly strongest exotic for the Void Walker. But let me mention the remaining uh, alternative. There's Ophidian Aspect for obvious reasons. And there's the new Secant Filaments to abuse Devour even more. But when I explain to you the build, I think that Astrocyte still pays off more than Secant Filaments, even though many YouTubers uh, will try to convince you to grind Secant Filaments. Of course, they're very good, but I think Astrocyte does more. Simply, it's a movement exotic, and, we, and I think, Patty, you know how strong movement is in this game. <laughs> Definitely. So, starting point, Blink, Astrocyte first. What now? What, how do we build the subclass? There were many ideas here. Oh, and one exotic I forgot to mention. Controverse Hold is awesome. Gets you more grenades, uh, more overcharged grenades. Also gives you damage resistance for free. But now, Astrocyte Verse and Blink. How do we kit it out? So there are three aspect choices. Basically, we need to find one which we don't want. So let's talk about the child first, which is the newest addition to the family, so to speak. When you pop Rift, here he is, little Void Soul. He just hangs out for 25 seconds. If you do nothing, he will vanish. If you shoot someone, and very important note here, indirect line of sight. They cannot be like 90% hidden. They need to be in complete line of sight with you. Child takes off, lands at them, and tethers them. Patty is now slowed, weakened, and is getting damaged. Now, of course, this doesn't kill him completely, right? Yes, doesn't kill him. But it stops regeneration, it does damage, it weakens him for my damage, and it has a notorious tendency to chase around corners. So let's demo that, I would suggest we demo that. Yeah, I'm a puppet, and I would like you to run quickly. Just run once I shoot you. Run. And it chases. And of course this is just a demo, but it will chase very strongly. You need to run way, way far to escape the child. It has different functionality depending on the rift type, the healing rift. Whenever someone is tagged, it will give you grenade and melee energy. Of course, also if you kill someone who is tethered, you will get a chunk of rift energy. That doesn't depend on the rift, so killing tethered people gives rift. With healing rift, tethering people gives ability energy. With empowering rift, tethering people gives you health. So, of course, the more... more uh, Enticing one of the two is the healing rift. You want more ability spam. Like Bungie spent all this time trying to stop you from using abilities, and here you are again farming ability spam. In any case, I think the child is extremely strong. It is one of the key counterplay options to most passive play cells, and it can chase players, stop them from regenerating, stop them from getting rid of heavy zones. It's just a must pick, so that one definitely in there. Yeah, I put it almost in the same category sometimes as like a thorn type thing where it just takes people out of the play for a moment because they have to focus on getting safe and regenerating. And so especially if you're in like a odd man situation, like you're fighting one, two or three people, 
sometimes just having that little child out there can really um, make you kind of isolate those fights one by one since people are worried about healing and getting away from whatever is damaging them. Yeah, the radius is actually 10 meters. Radius, not diameter. It's quite big. So we have cleared up child as fragment choice. We have chaos accelerant for the overcharge grenades and the devour aspect over. So let's talk about the overcharge grenades, which are very exciting and can win matches. There are only four grenades of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven choices which you can actually overcharge. Anyway, there are only four choices which you can overcharge. Vortex, Axion, Scatter, and Magnetic. Vortex grenades. Uh, this is the only way possible for you to increase the size of the Vortex grenade. The fragments can increase their duration and damage, but the size is only increased by this. That's a big Vortex. This can win games if you put it on a zone or on some barricade on a healing rift or anything like that. But the downside of this is that you can't really deploy it instantly. If you just throw it, it's still going to be the small vortex. If you want it big, you need to cook it all the time. And a little known downside of the cook is if you actually do it yourself, you will notice it cancels super regeneration. So while I'm holding it, I'm not getting any super energy. Mm, the small downside. <laughs> yeah. Small downside, but it is a cost. So the next choice are the Axions. Infamously, the Axion. Here they are. They recently got nerfed, actually. Today, they now have uh, aim assist, so Patty can easily shoot them. The overcharge, actually, we just found out, does not increase damage. Still 100. It increases the chase intensity and the radius at, by which I can miss, which is quite a lot. There are scatter grenades next, which can be overcharged. Don't use these. Like, uh, the only allure of scatter grenades is the high outgoing damage. Can I please mantle? Thank you. Uh, uh, high outgoing damage. It almost one shot. If you stood in it, it's one shot. But it's way too easy to get out of. And it's way, way too small area of effect. Just the vortex does it better. So, not worth. And the last one is the funniest, which I would really encourage you to use because it just makes PvP fun. It's the Magnetic, which is now overcharged into the former handheld Supernova. Mind you, you cannot infinitely hold this one. So I'm not letting go of my grenade button. It just lets go itself. It fires a spread of pellets, which push your enemy back. Quite a lot. And it also makes volatile. Doesn't one-shot. However, the knockback can one-shot. And specifically against Stompy Hunters, when people are jumping, could you please jump? It is particularly strong. You got damaged there by the hit. This doesn't do that much damage. So you can launch people off of cliffs. Question now. Are these grenades worth it? Well, I have to cook them. Again, while cooking the grenade, I don't get super energy. It removes part of the utility. And it gives me only one aspect choice. A fragment choice, sorry. So, if I can use the Vortex to secure a zone, it's a good idea, but what if I can't? And again, the child is also very good at securing zones. Do I need to double it? Well, when I'm going for a general purpose build, which I actually will main, I need to cover all my options. So I believe that for a general purpose build, Chaos Accident is not the way to go. It's just too expensive for a too much specific reward. It works well against only one thing, but I can do that with the child anyways, not quite as well, but good enough. So that leaves us with Devour, which is simple. Killing anyone with avoidability, with avoidability, will give me Devour. That's a status effect. It lasts f for 10 seconds of a grenade kill. It will last different durations based on the source. While Devour is active, so first, activating Devour gives you full health back. While Devour is active, every kill gives you health back, gives you grenade energy back. That's not stated on the description. And it also got slightly nerfed. The amount of grenade you get is smaller. But it is there. And finally, every kill extends Devour. 
Formerly, warlocks were able to eat their grenades for devour. This has been removed from the game, which is a very big pain point for someone like me who loves to do that. Now I need a kill or the second filaments to get devoured. Okay, so now we understand the aspects. Let's talk about the fragment choices. We have settled on the armor uh, of choice. So now how do we buff this up with the fragments? Now here was a big challenge for me as a build maker. What do I take? Some have penalties, some have benefits. What is the optimal balance? And in my opinion, the child is very strong, but it's hard to buff. The thing I really want to buff is Devour. It's simple, but it's strong. It gives me my health back and it makes me able to aggress against multiple people. So, how do I get more Devour? Well, there is Echo of Starvation, which for a 10 recovery penalty, which hurts on a Warlock, will give me Devour whenever I pick up an Orb of Power. Okay, immediately I can go for something like Harmonic Siphon on the helmet to create orbs of a void weapon double kills. But we also have another trick to get orbs here, which is Echo of Harvest. So now, think about this very closely. Defeating weakened targets with a headshot final blow creates an orb of power. The child flies at people and then weakens them. So if child attacks someone and I kill them, I get an orb of power, getting super energy and devour. So in this way, the child actually synergizes with the devour aspect, feeding me both super energy and health. So in a way, we get the benefit of the empowering rifts health gain from child tanks without using empowering rift at all. So these two synergize very nicely. You would be tempted to use Echo of Persistence to extend Devour. Unfortunately, my build here would lose 10 recovery, which is a too high price to pay. We need the maximum cooldown on the Rift, and we need the maximum regeneration speed because we will be moving quickly and engaging and disengaging very rapidly. If you have a build which can sustain the penalty, of course, going here for Echo of Persistence would be good. However, here I would need to either sacrifice recovery, I think even resilience could go. So I chose instead something for more general utility, Echo of Instability. The only other choice here was something like Echo of Leeching, which is wasted because it gives health back. There is Echo of Domineering, which we won't take advantage of. The finisher one only works in PvE. The exciting one is Echo of Provision, damaging targets with grenades grants male energy. But if you look at the strength difference here, I, I would be willing to bet that the extra two strengths will make up for the gain of Echo of Provision. So the, 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 that will be the justification for these three. And the fourth one is Echo of Dilation for the stats and for the enhanced radar resolution. Because when I'm flanking, I need to know exactly where my opponents are. And the enhanced radar really makes that very easy. So what kind of weapons do you like to use most with this kind of build? Because that seems pretty versatile, but I'm curious like, what you think actually works the best with it. And I'm glad you mentioned that because... In fact, you can go for your favorite weapons, whatever they are, because, again, the blink and the abilities here are tools at your disposal. It's like to make an analogy with a more well-understood build in the community, it's like Bottom Tree Gunslinger with Stomp you, in a way. You have the tricks, you have the trip mine, the grenades, the one-shot knife, the dodge. In this case, it's the melee, which boops people, the grenade, which does 130 damage, the child, which chases people and the blink movement itself. And you can really kit this out with any weapons you like. I mean, I myself got uh, 10,000 kills on Messenger recently on mouse and keyboard. I don't know if I should be proud of that or feel like a dad gamer now, but you can use whatever you like. However, there is a few things you can look out for. I showed how I use volatile rounds as for the strength benefit, but it can also synergize with void weapons. Now, Volatile in PvP doesn't do much because most of the time your enemy is dead anyways by the time Volatile procs. It's just Dragonfly in, in the end of uh, the story. But you can make the build synergize with your weapons. I took Sniper Rifle here because Sniper Rifle is very good at getting the headshot on someone who's slowed, giving me the orb, giving me Devour. The Shayuras is very lethal and 
with adrenaline junkie and killing wind, it lets me capitalize on the grenade kills, which give me devour and volatile, and now also a damage boost. With the magnetism, pun intended, of magnetic grenades, it's very easy to get a grenade kill and then go on an absolute roll melting people with something like this Shayura. Again, I highly encourage your viewers to try their favorite weapons because it definitely does work. It is a versatile build. Yeah, when I was testing this out uh, while we've been playing with it the last couple of days, I've been having a lot of fun with the Shayuras and I have soul combo. It just seems like it synergizes really, really well with this playstyle and you can kind of go for that sort of aggressive sniper playstyle while still getting uh you know some distance pretty quickly by using a sniper and then blinking away and um you know all the uh set up with like the child of old gods works really well with sharas where you can tag people then um you know use your grenade to push or uh you know kind of play however you like to but it's a really nice synergistic setup yeah and while we're on the topic of weapons i'd like to mention for your viewers the armor setup i think most of you saw this already but uh, mobility as much as you like, resilience, I would advise six, because that's the threshold which cancels most of the obnoxious things in this meta currently. Again, this is also a very personal choice. In 6v6, you can easily go down to two resilience and nobody will know how to punish you. 10 recovery and 10 discipline are a must. Again, the grenade is one of the stronger abilities in this uh, arsenal, so having it back more often is very strong, especially since it gives us Devour, Volatile, potentially a damage boost via Adrenaline Junkie. The intellect stat here is a very interesting discussion point. Depends on the super you want to use. I would advise against going Nova Warp. Sure, you can get multi-kills, but it runs out very quickly. And it's, it's not easy to shoot down, but uh, it's easy to get yourself trapped in enemy territory and then not really have a benefit to Nova Warp. Also, the longer cooldown doesn't really justify it either. My experience, choosing your favorite Nova Bomb is the better, ch better play, because it gives you more options. The build the default is versatile enough and has fast enough movement that you really don't need it from a roaming super. The bomb is good enough to cancel others' obnoxious playstyle. So, intellect, go as much as you feel like you need. If you want to cancel bubbles with the bomb, you would need to go decently high to get it up in time. So we often talk about some of the strongest different builds in PvP, like the Top Tree Dawnblade has been so. really popular in Warlock for a long time, and then there's been different combinations that rose up in the meta, like the Bottom Tree Stormcaller with uh, something like the Stag has been kind of popular, and uh, Shadebinder. So where do you think this build fits in with all the other Warlock builds on the table, and then even some of the other subclasses um, on Hunter and Titan? So that's a good question there, and I might be making a hot take by saying it, but I think it is competitive with every other choice on the Warlock, because the kit is just so versatile. There are very few things this cannot do, which other classes can do better. And specifically there, I'm thinking about Top Tree Dawn's Float, which is the most underused and underappreciated part of that kit, interestingly. Most people use top down for the movement, but I feel like the movement on the Voidwalker with Blink is actually much, much stronger, faster, more evasive. And I hope your viewers will have understood that after watching our video. The thing I cannot do on Voidwalker is float, which is a big advantage for top three Dawnblade players. Now, this has its downsides on top down too. You are on Vader, you can get sniped, but this is something I have to give up if I want to run Blink. On Stormcaller, I have the Chain Grenade, which is a much bigger threat than the Child. While the Child cannot get shot, so cannot the Stormcaller Nade, and the Stormcaller Nade forces people to spread. Child also forces people to move, but it doesn't delete as much health as quickly. Middle Tree Dawnblade with the Healing Avalanche and Lumina, which is very degenerate and which I think we've covered on your channel, but it's a very fringe playstyle. And if you think about the other classes, there are many things which you could argue are stronger than the Warlock. There is Titans with Overshield spam, Barricade farm. There is Rhyme farm, the most... Oh god, I don't, don't want to mention it on YouTube. People are going to start Rhyme farming. But yes, there is that, which is very hard to counter using Voidwalker. So is it the best? No, but we play Destiny. There is no best answer. Yes, Stompy Hunters, you heard me. There is no best answer. This is a very strong an answer, 
and it does counter many play styles. But if we go into extremes, we might need to take some swappables and to make some changes in the build if we want to counter most extreme play styles. How do you think it does against some of the most popular things right now, like the Lorley's uh, Titan that likes to run around one-shotting people, or like the Renewal Grasps uh, Hunter? The Renewal Grasps lose. Simply put, the child is stronger than Renewal Grass, which is a, b a big surprise. But if you were in Renewal Grass, I just launched a child at you. You need to deal with child now. And while you're dealing with child, I just break the crystal. Mind you, the majority of the damage resistance of renewals comes from the crystal, not from the dust field. So breaking the, the crystal just ends their career. I launch the child at them, break the crystal, they're done. It's countered. Lorelei is a much bigger pain point. So I need like a lot of brain power to counter Lorelei. The main idea is again to get child in there somehow, which is much harder to do if you are being threatened with the body shot Lorenz. You can also try looping the magnetic grenade at them to get them weaker. The melee has crazy magnetism. But it's hard. And I have to admit this. One of the swappables to deal with Lorelei over shield, oh, uh, with Lorelei damage boost, I'm sorry, would be to take a damage resist myself, and I already mentioned the tag exotic helmet, which is a fan favorite, but it also works here, to get me more childs and to let me survive the body shot in the first place. The tiny overshield of the healing rift is enough to survive it, but it's damn close. So you need the full overshield of the healing rift to survive the body shot Lorenz. I'm pretty sure of that. It is also resilience gated, but with medium resilience and the full overshield, you will survive the body shot Lorenz. Also the headshot Ariana. But I think it's quite clear that it's very difficult. The rest of the playstyles are decently countered. Stompies are out, out stompied, ironically. They're, we are faster. Dune marches, I, I can push away from me. Titans cannot chase me. There is a way to play against almost everything in the current meta. The main pain point, again, being Lorelei. I think uh, I have explained most of the features of this build. I am really excited for the future of Voidwalker. Part of me feels guilty because now I know the Crucible will be filled with Voidwalkers. And I'm not sure if I want to play against this build myself. But I encourage your viewers to try this out. It's lots of fun. It is a skill gap in Destiny, so don't be discouraged if you don't do well game one. It's a learning curve, but it's very satisfying. And I, and I, I know we, I played with you, Patty. You were frustrated day one, but what, were your, what was your experience of a couple hours play? Yeah, I think it's really cool because it's one of the ones that, for me, doesn't come very naturally. I obviously played mostly Hunter, and um, I've used Blink a ton in Destiny 1, but it's not something that I've spent a lot of time with in Destiny 2, so... It takes me a while to kind of get used to it, but I was having a lot of fun um, by the end of the time when I was trying to capture some footage. I was consistently able to blink away from a lot of supers that were trying to kill me and use some of the cool tricks. And there are those moments where you put all the pieces together and um, do something really cool. Like you'll hit them with like a sticky grenade and then push them away and then blink backwards. And it's just, it's really fun to kind of put the pieces of the build together and see it kind of shining. For anyone interested, there's also a video on Maki's channel I'd really recommend where he goes over how to beat passive playstyles with a bunch of different options, and I thought it was really interesting and definitely worth watching. I'll link it in the description for anyone who wants to check it out. Be sure to subscribe to Maki's channel while you're over there, and also subscribe here if you haven't yet. And Maki also helped me with a video about the Lumina a while ago and how it's so strong in the current meta with a particular build on Dawnblade. So definitely check that out next. It's a video on the top right of your screen and also linked in the description.